Alrighty then. I'm getting dark in here. It's getting spooky. I've got my lights all set up. I'm good to go. Welcome to the Foolish Wanderers Podcast. Why must I be surrounded by fools? Welcome, Wanderers. Hey, Wanderers. Welcome back to the Foolish Wanderers Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about cryptids. I'm Katrina. And I'm Kendra. Let's dive into this mysterious episode. This mysterious episode. So what exactly is a cryptid? A cryptid is an animal that is thought to exist, but hasn't been proven to exist. So examples are Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, Mothman, Jackalope, things like that. And cryptids, they don't have to be supernatural, mythical, or even super strange, like the Jackalope. But many cryptids acquire their traits as their legends grow. So like they find different quote-unquote facts and things about them and so it basically helps embellish their legend and like create this huge phenomenon yeah it's just kind of like a giant game of telephone where like the story just kind of keeps becoming more the truth kind of you know starts to become more of like legend or like a myth Mm -hmm. just keeps growing and growing especially with like the older ones because even looking up the flatwoods monster there's so many like mixed like twists and turns that people are like oh it was this color this color there's like several different accounts and then people would come out like a couple weeks later and say oh i saw this and i'm like are you sure or is it just another one of those things where you like you hear about it and you want to be part of the story <laughs> like i've never heard of the was the flatwoods monster mm-hmm. yeah, yeah i've never heard of that one but like i know like loch ness sasquatch like the chupacabra mm-hmm. and then the, then the jack is it a jackalope yes yep. that's one that you could just like buy in like the southwest <laughs> and just take like little yeah. antlers right and they just glue them to like rabbits heads yeah pretty much it's mm-hmm. i think in some versions they have wings too like they have like bird wings awesome <laughs> that's cool so it kind of depends like again like who you ask and then it changes slightly or dramatically depending that would on be just freaky just being out in the desert oh, yeah. and all of a sudden like a flying rabbit with antlers <laughs> comes to <with> you <laughs> Yeah. I am. At, I don't know why, but when you said that they had wi- like some iterations, they have wings. I just pictured butterfly wings. I <laughs> picture them like like fluttering around. Like I'm a beautiful butterfly. Let me land on you. And then they like find a car- they f- like you're eating a carrot in the desert. I don't know why you would be, but then they like see the carrot and then they like swoop and then they take it and they just like flying away and they're just like. Yeah. It's like the seagulls with your french fries on the uh-huh. beach. They just come because, down and take yeah. it. Never bring a carrot into the <laughs> desert. <laughs> Isn't it? Don't rabbits like not typically eat carrots? They usually eat like lettuce and like other foliage. It's just um, because Bugs Bunny ate a carrot. The cartoons do, Katrina. Well, yeah, cartoons. Cartoons never are. lie. <laughs> are you sure? I don't think coyotes and roadrunners are, are yeah. making traps. <laughs> <and then eating. laughs> So, (laughs) getting to the the cryptid that we're going to be talking about today, it's the Flatwoods Monster. So, originally discovered by um, four childhood friends, uh, four boys, um, in 1952. It started out when um, the two May brothers, Edward and Freddie, and a couple of their uh, childhood friends, Neil Nunley and Tommy Heyer, I believe is how you say it, um, they were playing outside on a September night, September 12th, 1952, I believe in some cases it says that they're playing football. Doesn't really matter. They're outside. And they saw um <laughs> <laughs> they saw a red streak fly across the sky and it seemed to crash on a nearby farm, which owned by G. Bailey Fisher. And so they decided to go check it out and then on the way to the crash site, the it was the May's house. So they stopped by to get their mom and then they brought their, their dog with them. And then also their mom Kathleen called um a national guardsman that she knew apparently eugene lemon and so he accompanied them as well so that way because it was dark outside at this time and so they wanted someone who could help them like protect them if something did happen so those six people and then their their cute little dog went up to this hill on on the fisher's farm um and when they got there they they started climbing up the hill and their dog richie richie yeah so then they climbed up the hill and when they got probably about um, a fourth fourth of a mile to the top, They um, their dog Richie ran ahead and started barking. And then um, he came back almost instant, like as soon as he 
disappear from the sight, he started running back towards them for full speed, wincing and with his tail between the, its legs. And so the group still went up <laughs> and um, went to investigate the crash site. Wait, so they the dog came back running with like his tails between its legs, like crying, uh-huh. yeah. and they still decided to go forward. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not yeah. always the smartest, but especially with like, because I think these boys were like, I think the youngest was like six or something like that. So they were young. They're like in like they I think the oldest one was was he ten, fifteen. But yeah, they're oh young goodness. kids. But this they is still already went up like there. the start to like us like a bad horror movie. Oh yeah, it's like a yeah. It's like you try to yell at your screen, like, don't go up don't there. Don't go investigating <laughs> weird red streaks in the sky. Exactly. Well, you can, yeah, well, yes, go do that, but then don't c- keep going when your dog comes back afraid. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so then when they got to the top of the hill, they saw like this weird mist, and they said it smelled like metallic and sulfuric, and it made their Ew. eyes. Wait, there was so, a fart mist. N- no. <laughs> But you said so. Sulf- just... You said sulfuric. sulfuric. Yeah, so like, like a yeah. fart mist. I guess. <laughs> <Some way. laughs> yeah. Okay, I like this story. I, you yeah, lost me, okay. and now I'm intrigued now. Okay. It's a fart mist. <laughs> I'm glad fart brought you back. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So then they went up, and as they started walking up the hill, they ran into the mist, and Lemon raised his flashlight to where they could see the there's a red glow like a red orange glow i've also seen her described as like greenish so again that's another thing that's kind of changed through different okay. encounters and like different things um but yeah so lemon raised his flashlight to point it at the red glow and there in front of them stood this 10 foot tall four foot wide creature that seemed to be made out of metal and the metal it's <laughs> pretty much the head it seemed to have um kind of like you know is it an elizabethan like the collars like the lace yeah kind of yeah it's kind of like that but it was shaped as metal and shaped kind of like a spade like a deck of cards and then there was <laughs> a bright red like head in the center of it. it was bright red glowing eyes and then um it seemed to be wearing like a metallic outfit with like a giant metal pleated skirt pretty much with long arms with claws like me- like metal claws at the ends of its fingers mm-hmm. um and then <laughs> as soon as the light hit it pretty much it started hissing and lunged at them or started floating towards them and so the group freaked out and obviously ran um as any normal person would do um <laughs> so oh my gosh but yeah so then after they um after they went home or got home they started having symptoms of um nausea throat irritation vomiting and these symptoms lasted for days especially for the youngest boys um and they kind of like the symptoms were kind of passed off as side effects of hysteria but it's also it's been said to like these symptoms are also are signs of exposure to mustard gas so that they used in world war one yeah which is yeah so that's kind of an interesting interesting thought Mm -hmm. um I think it was that night to um, Mrs. May and Mr. Lemon, they reported their encounter to the authorities. And then I guess I've heard some accounts where like the police were already kind of trying to look and see, because they had like, they had different um, reports of people saying, oh, a plane crashed here, so you should go check it out. And so they did and never found anything. And so they, I think they kind of took, like they went up there, but didn't really do anything. They didn't find anything. And they also- There was um, no signs of any- like ship crash at least like that they could find or like that they tell us because we don't know too because like it's it could be a cover-up thing too like they say oh we went up there and you know didn't find anything or whatever but so it's kind of hard to say and it's it's in the woods like it's in kind of it's in the middle of a bunch of farmland so it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly where you were okay but so who kind of and it was like it was dark at night so it's kind of hard to say if they saw anything and just or if they missed it because it was dark it's hard to tell but yeah, and then I guess at this around the same time that night, um, they also were told the story to a local news reporter. And I guess he went out. There's some cases saying that he went out that night and the following morning, and some just saying he went out the following morning to where the location was. And he still, and when he went out there, he could still kind of smell traces of the um, sulfur- sulfuric like smell, like the, the metal fart metallic mist? smell. <laughs> yes, the fart mist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he also saw two like tracks 
um, like skid tracks and then like a weird thick black goop, I guess is how they described it. So kind of like oil, like old oil is what I'm thinking. Um, and then some people say that it could have been from a Chevrolet pickup, um, like driven from a local and just was leaking oil or something. So okay, yeah. So it's kind of hard to tell exactly because it was just two tracks and not like a huge like plane crash kind of a skid mark thing, you know. But yeah, and there's some reports too. This again is something that is kind of told in some stories and some not. Some people say that Mrs. May was visited by a couple people of strange men in black suits, so like the men <gasps> in black. <laughs> the men in black. So, yeah, so awesome. some people say that she was, uh, was interrogated by them a little bit and they came and picked up the dress she was wearing that night because apparently it got in some of the, apparently, I guess there's like a residue from that night or something, like a, like some of the oil or something that was on. Oh, that um, black oil stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I guess they took it. And they said that they'd return it. It never was returned. So it's kind of, you know, if it was real, then that's pretty suspicious. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, so that's kind of interesting. What state did this happen in? Because you said it happened in uh, Braxton Virginia, County. Dude. Oh, it's West yeah. Virginia? I'm going to look that Virginia. Up. Yeah. You might want to double check. But I'm looking that it's... up right now. Yep. West Virginia. Yep. Okay. So then kind of going um, into other reports. So apparently around the same time, people had been reporting um, like their radios losing frequent, like freaking out for a couple hours at a time like the previous couple days like especially that day of and then also like um, the time of the crash like reportedly around the same time as this they saw this thing crash like apparently their houses shook um and like weird electronic things like glitches and things like that happened and like interruptions and like radio frequencies stuff like that um and then there was a mother and a daughter 20 year 21 year old daughter that claimed to encounter the same creature about a week prior to this incident the first one on um september 12th um and apparently the daughter was so badly affected by the encounter that she was in the hospital for three weeks with like mental and like issues from i think they said that she inhaled some of the gas as well so it's kind of hard to so she had like the same like the nausea yeah it was like the same the same side effects the vomiting nausea throat irritation as like those boys the uh, Mm -hmm. the the mom okay yeah yep and then um apparently the mother of the the farmer whose land that the creature landed on it said that about the time of the crash her house was violently shaken and the radio cut out for 45 minutes so again kind of puts credence to something happening with like something whether or not it's like an alien ship or like if it's like a governmental thing and something happened um, and then there is a director of a local board of education, which he seemed to, which he claimed to have seen a flying saucer taking off at 630 on the morning of September 13th. So the day after this encounter, and then apparently September 13th. Oh, so they left or the monster yeah. left the day after. Okay. Apparently. And then I guess later that day, the 13th, there was a young couple I think this is again like later at night. They were taking a drive through the mountains in Frametown, West Virginia, um, at dusk when um, their car came to a sudden stop and wouldn't start. So basically, it all cut off. Like you couldn't move it, radio, everything cut off. Um, and then they smelled the same sulfuric odor. And um, so then they got out of the car, which again, horror movie Never 101. Do. <laughs> Don't Lock do the doors. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But they got out of the car to see if they could find this, like the, the source? where the smell was coming from, uh, the source yeah. of where it was coming from, and see if they could start their car again. However, they found something much more horrific than in their minds that they could have ever imagined. So apparently, they saw the same supposed creature. However, from from the waist down, it looked like what was described in the Flatwoods. So they had like the metal pleated skirt the dress. Okay. Um, yeah, and then but from the waist up, it was like a reptilian humanoid. So it looked. What? Yeah, so like it was a giant. Did it still have human. like the red glowing eyes? I believe so. Yeah, it had like yeah, so it's like red eyes, and then both like all green skin, kind of like if you like, Google any reptilian human, like that kind of basic okay. image, like green yeah, skin yeah. and yeah. So yeah, so a lot of people are thinking that you know if it's if it is alien, there's a lot of people saying that it could be either a giant alien and like a suit that kind of like a like a mech like iron man suit kind of just like like, it, like like the reptilian likes to wear like a metal skirt with like a 
yeah elizabethan era (laughs) metal collar (laughs) yeah and then like like, a spade helmet okay yeah then that's how like fashion is fashion got it (laughs) this is like how they would travel from place to place or whatever or throughout yeah they would put on their sunday's best (laughs) exactly you want to look Um, good if you're gonna go traveling across the galaxy right I mean, if you plan to go there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then some people are like thinking like it could could have been just like a giant ship for a little alien or something like that. So basically, just like pr- to pretty much take any of those like a small an- alien in a giant suit or like a giant mm-hmm. alien in like a normal suit for that alien size, things mm-hmm. like that. Um, and then there's been some theories trying to explain debunk basically what they saw. Yeah, and- yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so the biggest one that I've seen um, was that some believe that it's an owl, that which would explain like if it would, it would explain like the hissing and like the the flying towards them, which yeah I can understand yeah like that part makes sense, but having the giant like Elizabethan collar and being ten feet tall and a metal skirt like that there's no really connection unless people are like yeah. oh yeah the foliage from the the trees behind it could have been the metal skirt but it's. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like some warped or I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You see weird it's things weird. in the night sometimes if you're alone and already scared. Yeah. But it doesn't really explain like the sulfuric, like the fart cloud. Exactly. Or, <laughs> exactly. Like, what's the explanation yeah. for that? They don't have one for the the mist. Some people would think it's just because they're hysteric. That's why the hysteria, like the symptoms from hysteria is like like being nauseous and things like that so that's what they chalk it up to it's just being like it's seeing something hysteric. or freaking themselves out yeah okay but also thing is too is like the dog was afraid and then six people unless they had a really elaborate plan for six people to say what they saw and have the same story and then mm-hmm. which you know, is so a weird thing to do on like yeah especially with little kids but then they also come um, around this time, especially, there's a lot of small towns trying to get tourists to come to their town. Oh. So that's why they think, oh, I they've think just made like this a- up. It was yeah. a tourism campaign. Pretty much, yeah. There's a lot of cryptids that actually aren't real because, or like, they don't, they've been trying to been proven as not real as like hoaxes and stuff because yeah. people want their towns to be visited, which makes sense, but it just kind of yeah. sucks because it's not real and yeah. So yeah, so okay. that's kind of the... So that's the Flatwood monster? Yeah. And Are there any also... more, like, like sightings today? Or is that, like, the no. last sighting that they've ever had? That's, at least from what I can find, like, that's the last time it's been seen. However, it's been huge in, like, pop culture in Japan, especially. Oh, cool. It's been... <laughs> I guess they, at least the sources that I've read, they said, like, Japanese culture, they love the Flatwood monster. And it's been in a lot of video games and, th- and like, anime um especially it's like final bosses and stuff and so okay. some examples are like in the legend of zelda majora's mask he's um i guess there's a side quest i believe that um there's a bunch of aliens and a ufo trying to like basically take over a ranch like um they're invading a ranch using a ufo and um they basically the creatures look pretty much like the flatwoods monster um and there is i think um, Ombregon, I think is how you say it, is a final boss, is a Flatwoods monster, pretty much. Um, and there's also an anime called Sar- Sergeant Frog. And then in, Sergeant uh, there's Frog. a creature, <laughs> Sergeant Frog. <sighs> and then I guess in the episode Fake It Till You Make It, there's a um, a character that looks pretty close to the Flatwoods monster. So, yeah, so cool. it's in a lot of their stuff. But yeah, and then of course, there's still a whole bunch of tourist attractions in. Uh, flatwoods and like there's a whole museum about different artifacts and news <laughs> clippings and things so which yeah with the tourist you have to get your tourist monies so yes yeah, so they have a lot of merch and they take they took this full force so but yeah right. so that's you gotta do what month. you gotta do to sell a bunch of t-shirts <laughs> <laughs> pretty much get your town some extra income yep, some cred yeah let's get um, into the whole dag <laughs> Okay. So the next one I have is a little bit shorter. It's the Hodag. So this one is set in Rylander, Wisconsin. So oh, cool. A st- okay, a state we know and love very well. Mm-hmm. Um, so in nineteen or eighteen ninety three, Gene Shepard, who was a respected timber cruiser, stumbled into a logging camp, saying he just encountered a black Hodag, and he said that this creature was seven foot long and thirty inch thirty inches tall. 
So he had spikes all the way down the length of his body, kind of like a dinosaur, and then fists full of needle-sharp pointed spears at the end of its tail, um, and razor-sharp claws and fangs that he said could could rival a saber-toothed tiger and could rip out the belly of the biggest bear. So basically, a pretty nasty creature <laughs> that could kill you with so- one swoop. And then it doesn't really say like if this was a, a creature from that was known at the time or thought to exist at the time. He just kind of said that this creature attacked him and that he saw it and then they need to go kill it. Um, okay, but like, how do you survive like a creature attacking you if it's like <laughs> has these huge fangs and is like covered in like spears all over its body? Yeah, see, that's that's where it kind of <laughs> gets a little bit like okay, you know. So I don't know if he said he got attacked or if he just saw it when he stumbled into this camp, okay. but he said for sure that he saw it. Um, so yeah, so then I guess he rallied up a bunch of his buddies and then they took dynamite into the woods and <gasps> wasn't Wait, killed what? <laughs> yeah. So their weapon of choice at this lumber camp where they use <laughs> have axes and like, yep. you know, probably like a gun or two, mm-hmm. they decided to arm themselves with TNT. Yes, yes, ma'am. So Di- I read so they were gonna <laughs> go all like wily coyote on this. Okay, I like yeah. the creativity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I read some sources saying that they tried once before to go out and like with acid or something, and then acid? it didn't work. Okay, yeah. wait. <laughs> now this is this is so they've tried to kill yeah. this thing twice. Yeah. The first time. They were like, what should we use? We're at a lumber camp. Yeah, we have these axes. (laughs) But you know, Bill has this can of, like, this jar of acid that I think would do the trick. (laughs) What? Yeah. And then their second time, they decided to use TNT. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. And then, I guess, after they came back with this creatures charred remains they took a photo with it and it was released like published wildly so it was around at least the state and it became widely known i think eventually around the country as well oh so Uh, this on the slide right here is this it is this the charred remains i don't know if it's that one but i think that's the photo there that we're referencing yeah okay because it looks yeah yeah, this isn't really it looks kind of just like a crispy painted pit bull that they (laughs) they added like bull horns to it like it's not seven foot like seven feet long and 30 inches tall or whatever it looks like a pit bull yeah so what they were saying is like apparently from tip of its tail to its nose that was seven feet long but even this picture yeah it looks like like Maybe five feet. It looks feet, like a French feet, bull. It looks feet. like a French bulldog. Like Pretty it much. looks like a bulldog. And, and funny enough, they um they actually in the story they said that they're going extinct because they're <sighs> running out of the um of this creature's only food source, which is guess what? Acid. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> all white bulldogs. It eats Wait, only what? all white bulldogs. <laughs> yes, that is his only food source. It's all white bulldogs, and that's why it's going extinct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yep. they just painted. They took a bulldog <laughs> and they painted it, and they just like got. They went to like Hobby Lobby and they bought some horns, yes. and then they just yep. like, glued it on there. Yeah, pretty all much. white That's bulldogs. What, what a picky yep. eater! I know, especially in the woods. Like you're not going to come across an all white bulldog in the woods <laughs> in Wisconsin very often. No, no. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's so a little bit of a backstory on Shepherd. I guess he was a prankster and a spendthrift, so not necessarily the most trustworthy guy. He's always kind of been a guy that um, would try to make a quick buck, pretty much. Um, okay. And actually, one of his um, side businesses was selling perfumed moss through the mail. Boy, I, what? I, What's perfumed moss? Like moss, you know, like tree moss? He perfumed yeah. it and sold it like potpourri, I'm thinking. <laughs> 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 that sounds like what exactly what anthropology does the store anthropology yeah. Yeah, how they so sell perfect. like like 300 dollars like stumps yep they yep. just mark it up like a yep perfumed ma oh yeah yep. that's how you really show off your wealth oh there's perfumed <laughs> moss oh my <laughs> gosh i know what i'm getting you for your birthday next year oh yeah get some moss some perf- no not just any moss baby you get the best perfumed moss 
it feels <laughs> so special. We should sell perfumed moss. Oh, on our merch store? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Send some, get some cinnamon moss and get your, like, beach moss and you get your... Yeah, lavender. sandalwood moss. Ooh, fancy. That's too fancy. No. That's too fancy? Okay. That's too, that's too fancy. <laughs> <laughs> And that, I guess one of his um, other things he do is when a creditor, which I think I looked it up, it says a creditor is an entity, person, or institution that extends a credit, extends credit by giving another person uh, permission to borrow money. Okay. It's basically like a bank. Okay, like a bank. Okay. Pretty much like a loan. Yeah, a bank. Let's just say a bank. So someone from the bank would knock on his door. He'd put soap in his mouth and lather it up. Then he'd run around snarling at people. So they'd run away because they didn't know if he had rabies or not. So he'd Fake oh my babies. gosh <laughs> so this guy the more you look into it the more and more you can tell he's like he's not the most trustworthy at all so you take everything that he says why doesn't he answer. just <laughs> not answer the door good question he i don't know he just wanted to mess with people <laughs> like, i don't know why was his first instinct to put soap on his mouth like in his mouth ah. to create like <laughs> foam and then <laughs> your guess is as good as mine i i, I right. can tell you I think it's uh, a men. I think it's a man thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think women are just uh, like, just don't answer the door, and then men are like, yeah. no, I have an idea, and they just go run and put soap in their, soap in their mouth. <laughs> I'll have rabies. Yeah, like, I'll have rabies. I'll pretend I'll have rabies, and it'll scare them away. <laughs> and then, so apparently, he, um, the hodag, then just kind of the more you look into it, more it seems to be just like another business ploy. Um, okay. And he claimed to that he had successfully captured a live hodag. And he kept him in his barn. And then suppose, like, again, how they fed it is diet of the all white, white bulldogs. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> but then when he said they had a live one, apparently people came from all around the country to see the elusive creature. He would okay. and charge them like 10 cents a pop. So what is made- that equivalent today? This is in 1893, right? Yeah. Let me look it up. Quick. Okay. Um about three bucks okay so three bucks he was making yeah so it's not horrible i guess um that's i mean if people are like lining up like coming across the country to spend three dollars you know 10 cents in 1893 three dollars worth today like you make a pretty good (laughs) exactly right especially since he cut the creature in a dimly lit area and far away oh barely visible (laughs) I know it's like a it, he just had like a little white bulldog that he painted black, stuck some horns on it, and was like, yeah. "Behold the hodag!" <laughs> Pretty much, and it would just come out and like you know bulldogs just kind of like they mm-hmm. stand there and then he's like you know drool. Well, it actually wasn't a bulldog though. I'll get to that in a second. Is um, it a pig? No. <laughs> okay. Is it um, a chicken? No, I'm joking. <laughs> that would be it was like a chicken that thing. <laughs> I would be actually. scared of that. Oh, yeah. Um, but apparently, he um, when these people would come to see the hodag, he yeah. would put on a nice like, suit, and apparently he'd go check on it, and there'd be a commotion, and you'd hear like horrendous growling and snarling and snapping and like things basically going awry. And he'd come okay. out, and he would be running up the stairs like out from where he was with his clothes in tatters. So he'd tell people, <gasps> I'm sorry, I can't show you the hodag today. He's not in a good mood. He's angry. So you can't see him. So that this was- guy, <laughs> I'm telling you, this Gene Shepherd is like this, like the weirdest kind of most clever businessman, like exactly. oily businessman I've ever heard of. Very. Oily He's kind of like a. Is it like a snake oil salesman? Is that the term? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 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 He just. <laughs> <laughs> He just has a quick, che- he has a nice suit on, runs into the bar, does a quick chain, come out and be like, oh my gosh, oh, we've just been, yep. attacked me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There's no blood. There's no I have blood this, skin. I have <laughs> this scratch. Oh. Yeah, he's like, we can't do yeah. this today. It's really, yeah, he's much. smart, very smart. Mm-hmm. And then apparently as like popularity grew, he took it on the road. So like basically made a circus. <laughs> so he went to different county fairs and um, would have it i think he said like in a stall or something Mm -hmm. but here's the thing he hired his friend luke s carney i believe um and together they crafted the hodag from sculpted wood cowhide and cattle horns 
so it wasn't even alive at all. It didn't move it by itself. It was just a statue. It was just a statue. Yep, and they kept it in a darkened stall to which people could only observe it like for short periods of time. Um, and they said uh, they're admitted momentarily, obstinately for their own safety. So basically, like you can only look for the at this thing for a couple of seconds; otherwise, you can get hurt. Gosh, so they're so smart. <laughs> they're very Goodness, smart. They thought of everything. Every like yeah. little loophole. Yep. And as time went on, they um, Shepard had his sons work behind the scenes, and they would pull wires or strings attached to its limbs, so uh-huh. that the creature would move, like appear to move. So as the story grew, they added more and more things to make it look more realistic. Okay. Um, and then apparently up um, there was record of him earning up to five hundred dollars a weekend. So at least five thousand viewers. Wait. Yeah, a dime. Yeah, five hundred dollars. Yeah, so five five thousand viewers are paying to see the whole egg every weekend. Is that in today's money, or is that like in that That's eighteen? Back then. So That's what back is? Then. Yeah, let's look. What is that worth? That is worth fourteen thousand five hundred dollars today. So he's making, wait. So he was making fourteen thousand dollars in yeah. like a single weekend. Yes, ma'am. For showing yeah, like this wooden like <laughs> doll that they put in like cowhide yeah with they had like yep. marionette and they were like dee, 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 yep. and <laughs> yeah because people oh my goodness cold. and like you don't have social media like you can't they don't have real like good pictures like you can't so it's not like you can it's just word of mouth that. pretty much yeah like you can't fact check it and that's but that's pretty much how this thing met its end because i believe no. it was on the verge of the 1900s um, a bunch there's a few um, scientists from the Smithsonian in Washington DC they wanted to come look at it and study it and then basically for Shepard to say oh it's fake I faked it you can't come visit it because it's fake so that's oh my god <laughs> he's so, so yeah. he okay I love this story because it's just about <laughs> a weird like a snake oil salesman just like hustling <laughs> getting oh, yeah. the money put in cow hides on wooden dolls like marionette puppets like you know, probably painting bulldogs black adding like <laughs> ho- like white bulldogs black adding horns to them having like having a nice suit and then quick changing into a tattered suit this guy's a genius oh yeah he's very good at what he does can but, you yeah. imagine like if it like if linkedin was back then or something <laughs> like having like i'm a hodag wrangler Oh, as your linkedin oh, profile like that's my <laughs> how'd you feed it though? how'd you feed the hodag yeah all you white bulldogs <laughs> duh <laughs> I'm a, i was a hodag wrangler for seven years <laughs> seven years of my life uh-huh. i think it was almost close to it was at least 10 years he had this thing going 10 years he jeez i, I wonder so. how much money he like swindled oh, from man. people hard to tell because it's i don't know if he showed it like when it wasn't at county fairs so it could have been off and on throughout the year but Mm -hmm. yeah but it's so well it's such a well-beloved creature and story throughout this like region in wisconsin Uh so rylander still uses the hodag as their mascot for the high school and as their town mascot today so yeah so there's oh my goodness yeah i see that yeah so it's kind of cool they have a unique pride of this creature that was proven to be fake but it's, so, it's such a fantastic story. It's a great it's kind of, story. Yeah. And when you look at this thing, like for the first time, I laughed because it looks like someone stuck dentures in this thing's mouth. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it this creepy smile, like this forced smile. But yeah. If I'm looking at an image and it says, man eating hodag captured in the <laughs> North Woods. And it just kind of looks like a, it looks like a stuffed bulldog that they added like, grandma dentures in (laughs) yeah it's a little bit comical so Mm -hmm. i did see some um there have been some reports though which is kind of odd saying that this is a hoax but there's been some people saying that they've actually seen a creature like this in the woods so what so i don't know it could just be a thing where it's like i want attention and you know like it's not real but i want to say it's real so it's kind of hard to tell like, if it is actually real or not. So that's why there's still some people that believe that it is real, even though at least this version of the Hodag is a hoax. But okay. So there could still be creatures loosely 
like like that look vaguely like this creature somewhere. Okay. Here's a little, like, fun fact thing that I found. It says, in 1959, President John F. Kennedy received a replica hodag during his trip to Rylander. And it said that he used the beast for inspiration while writing his inaugural address. (laughs) What? No, he did not. How does that fit? It does not fit. No. That does not fit. Oh, man. Okay, it says in 1967, the Hodag was the third string center for the Green Bay Packers during the Ice Bowl. (laughs) That's fantastic. Oh my goodness. The Hodag raised the prize-winning milking goat in the 2009 Wisconsin State Fair. (laughs) So that, it's just kind of like funny, like little fakes, myths. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought you meant he was like lifting up this goat, like... I don't people. know. <laughs> it's like, how do you? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, but it's just like weird. Yeah, so you can go on exploreryelander.com mm-hmm. to learn more about the hodag. It's got just like fun little infographics about it. <laughs> it says, the hodag is a scratch golfer and he never needs to buy golf balls either. He just collects the ones that are hit into the woods. So apparently the hodag is a very picky, picky eater. He only eats white bulldogs <laughs> and he hoards golf balls. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He loves to golf. He loves to <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Oh, this is a fun... Okay, so I was kind of worried maybe like he'd be like a stinky, smelly creature. It's oh, like, no. <laughs> but it says the hodag smells exactly like a pine-scented car air freshener. So, oh. so it's not <laughs> pine-scented, it's hodag-scented that you have in your car. Yeah, it's hodag scented. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I have a new merch idea for Rylander. Get you some hodag scented. Hodag scented car is yeah. <laughs> <Air> fresheners. <laughs> I'd buy one. I would too. Oh my goodness, yeah. So I this is probably my favorite cryptid that I've never heard of. Thank you, Katrina. It's, of course. This yeah, it's one of my fun. favorites. It makes me laugh. It's it's, it's funny. It's ridiculous, and it makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and with the um, with the creature, like with the um, the mo- the yeah, the hodag hoax, the wooden sculpture mm-hmm. that Shepard and Carney made. Apparently, after he was caught, that it was a fake. He says that it was burnt in a fire, like in a house fire. So we don't really know where that statue went, but supposedly oh. it was destroyed. <laughs> so. Okay, it's supposedly sad. burnt into a fu- Okay. That's mm-hmm. sad. Yeah. It'd be a, a great thing to go see in a museum, though. It would. I want to go see it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for listening, guys, to this little bit of a spookier podcast. Hope you guys had a few laughs and laughed along with us, especially about the whole day. <laughs> Please check out our Instagram, the Foolish Wanderers Podcast. Remember, we're going to post pictures of all of our what we talk about during our podcasts, so that way you can see what we're talking about. And also visit our YouTube channel where we upload all of our podcasts. And we're also going to be uploading, hopefully pretty soon, like little shorts, <laughs> and little fun things. So yeah. Otherwise, listen to us, download our podcasts from Spotify or wherever else you're hearing this. Yes, yes, please do. And please mm-hmm. feel free to give us feedback, especially DM us on Instagram. Let us know if there's any topics, any things you guys want us to talk about. We'd be glad to listen to your suggestions and see what we can do. Yeah. All right. Thank you, <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Thank you. Thank see you, y'all listeners. Next time. Thank you, Katrina, for doing the re- all the research for this episode. Oh, of course. It was fun. It was lots of fun. I had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, see you next time, okay, Wanderers. Right, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>
Дружка вечер. Дружка вечер. Дружка вечер.